everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another exciting podcast interview with industry leaders. On today's show, we are going to have a credit first discussion with Bob Lettis. He's the VP of Business Development at 700 Credit. Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me and uh, happy Good Friday to everybody. Yes, thank you uh, for those warm well wishes for the holiday season. And, you know, I want to talk to you about the tremendous growth of 700 Credit. Um, How many dealers are using your platform right now, Bob, if you had to pick a rough number? We have about 20,000 plus dealers, automotive, RV, and power sports using our 700 credit products, credit compliance and softball products. Wow, that's amazing. So let's talk about the big transformation in the industry. For years, the road to the sale was a discovery process, uh, a needs analysis, um, a pairing of product to needs, a test drive, and then the person would get into the f and office and, and maybe then, after considerable time, find out that they may not be able to afford the vehicle that was shown to them because of their credit. You know, I'm thinking now that consumers don't have time to waste. They want instant satisfaction. They want to know what they can afford within their budget. But you and I had a conversation the other day that really hit home. You know, if you go buy uh, or in the process of buying a house and you see something you like and you call the realtor, one of the first questions that realtor is going to ask is, well, how much have you been pre-approved for? How come it's taken so long for the auto industry to kind of shift to a credit first mindset like in real estate? Well, I, I think the real, you know, part of the reason is, is not because we didn't want to. Uh, a lot of it was we didn't have the software capability. We didn't have the data capability. We didn't have the processes built years ago. And one of the things that's really uh, changed a lot that people are starting to recognize in the industry is we, we have various types of calculating tools and uh, AI technologies and online digital tools now. So the industry is is moving to the forefront there. But the one key thing is that we always talk about is data, Uh, putting the right data into these tools. If we don't have the right data, the tools aren't going to perform to their maximum. And back in 2009, uh, is when the auto industry was first allowed to have the ability to use a soft pull or to be able to truly pre-approve or pre-qualify someone with live credit data. And back in 2009, as you know, we didn't have a lot of these calculating tools and AI technology and digital retailing was not even around in 2009. So I guess it came finally for the time for the meeting that we have the data now We have the software technologies now, and now we're going through an automotive phase where the consumers and the dealers are looking at how to properly utilize all these great tools and all this great data that we have to create a much better sales process uh, than we were using, you know, for the last 30 years. And, And I think the dealers that are starting to embrace this credit first process and embrace utilizing this live credit data up front in the process are starting to really uh, reap the benefits uh, that it brings and in shows an enhancement to all the tools that they're spending money on to create a much quicker, faster, uh, and more accurate process for the consumer. So let's talk about real life application. Um, just in case there's some lack of clarity on what you need to do a soft pull. Um, I'm on the the understanding if you have their first name, last name, email, phone, for example, um, if that's part of the meet and greet out on the parking lot because someone's using a mobile CRM or a mobile uh, tool, capturing that information 
could uh, then allow the desk to see that soft pull credit, meaning it could be part of a normal check-in. Hey, let me verify your information. Obviously, if they're going on a test drive, you can do a license with a license scanner, but what are most dealers doing on that initial meet and greet to uh, have an appropriate way of collecting enough information to get the soft pull? Well, the first thing to remember is this. With the soft pull product, we're not trying to change the process that they have today. We want that salesman to treat you know all consumers the same when they come in. Uh, the salesperson is not going to have be privy to this data. The uh, appropriate desk manager is going to be the one that's going to be able to see this data. So the sales process itself does not change. We're just giving the process more information up front. The only thing that we need to do a saw pull actually is a name and address. That's it. Mm. Now, usually when you meet and greet someone uh, in the uh, when they come to the storefront, you're usually able to get uh, they're willing to give you a cell phone number and they're willing to give you an email address because we always want to be able to uh, recontact them uh, some way. So but the only thing that the saw pull actually needs is a name and address and the beauty of just getting the name and address and no social security number or date of birth or any other personal information is that it does not affect that person's credit score in any way negatively. So it doesn't hurt the customer uh, and it's just asking for a simple name and address and that's it. So let's talk a little bit more about that. In today's modern retailing world where people are starting their deal online, uh, then continuing in the store, I'm assuming that more and more of your integration partners, uh, these digital retailing tools are uh, bringing that information early on. So the right cars uh, with the right payments are showing, are, are we setting the expectation even online much better with the soft pull, meaning if a customer is shopping by payment and we know approximately their credit um, are more the DR tools narrowing uh, what they can afford based on that soft pull? Uh, absolutely. Uh, a lot of these digital retailing tools are using some type of customer engagement banner to get those people that go online that are doing the research to get them to pre-qualify upfront so that we could capture that live credit data upfront and give a more accurate picture for the consumer of what they could buy, what they could afford, and allow the dealer also to get a hold of that information so that the dealer has knowledge of that person even before they come to the store or, or when they set an appointment. The, the secret here is, is not to hide anything, is to create a much more open process utilizing this live credit data to create a much more honest and open offering uh, for that consumer. And, and it's working. Uh, but the problem is, is this, as we all know, not everybody, not all consumers go to the same sites. They're using multiple and different sites, which is why 700 Credit has over 220 integration partners today. Uh, yeah. That includes the CRMs, digital retailing companies, equity mining companies, lead generation companies, so what 700 Credit has done is given all of these software tools the capability for the soft pull because we don't know which tool the dealer is going to use at any one time. And we don't know which tool the consumer is going to go to that the dealer may have uh, on their uh, website or if they go to a separate website, separate standalone website. So we're trying to do as much integration as we can so that we, we can gather this info wherever we can and push it to wherever the dealer wants us to push it to so that they can use this uh, in their process. Well, that makes sense. Um, give me some applications in the service lane. I mean, obviously digital retailing right now is mostly focused on variable ops. How are dealers using the credit first mindset in the service line? Well, dealers have always, you know, wished for that their service department could turn into a auto selling department. And it was always tough because we know service people 
you know, are, are great sellers of their service products, but, you know, selling a car is not their forte and that's not what they're there for. But we do know this, 50% of the people that are in or getting their car serviced at that car dealership uh, did not buy the car from them. So the dealer knows a lot uh, about the people that bought the car from them that are continuing to get their car serviced. But yet they've got these loyal service customers that could be going to this dealership for uh, a year to five years, yet they bought the car somewhere else. And by soft pulling these people, we can now uh, be able to find out what the propensity to buy uh, right there in the service department. And we could find out if their uh, potential with their subprime, prime, equity, they could have bought that car at a 10% interest rate and they may have a Toyota Corolla right now. And just like in the mortgage industry where they send you refi letters, hey, your credit is improved. And hey, Mr. Smith, we can now get you into a Toyota Camry for a lower car payment than what you're paying right now. Who wouldn't want to do that? Okay, so there's all kinds of ways we can utilize this sample data in the service department and turn those loyal service customers into buying customers. And it may be a situation too where they might not be able to buy today, but nine months from now, by looking at their credit and looking at their equity position, that we can now start to market to them properly for when that nine month period hits, that they're now ready and they're actually waiting for that opportunity to improve the car that they're currently in right now. And the best part about the service is, is this, when they're coming into service, what happens? They come into the service department, they drop their car, and usually they're waiting in the showroom, having a cup of coffee, having a donut, watching some TV. It's a very laid back uh, environment where that's the perfect time where you could strike a nice personalized conversation because you know exactly what the plan of attack is of how you want to structure that conversation with them so that they just feel like this is just a nice warm greeting that you brought your car to the service. And we're seeing some great software tools out there that the dealers have, these equity mining tools that are able to deliver this information and create great results from a sales standpoint and turning that service department now into a car selling department. Because I think you would agree, Brian, that the owner of a dealership would prefer to sell a car than an oil change, you know? And that's <laughs> what we're all trying to do is, you know, build the sale, but keep the customer happy and deliver good news to them as well. Because I think it would be great news to me if I was driving, let's say, a Toyota Corolla and somebody told me that I could now drive a better car at a lower payment without even having to put any money down. And that just trans transcends over to what happens in mortgage when we get those letters in the mail that says, hey, you're, you're able to reduce your mortgage payment with no money down. We love those letters. I've, I've refinanced my house a couple times over the years, and I look forward to that opportunity to save money and reduce my payments. Taking that same concept, we could carry that over into the auto industry and create a much happier environment and actually be looked at as an educational source for those consumers to how do I get my payment down lower and how do I get into a better car? Am I ready? Please, somebody help me. <laughs> well, you know, you know, dealers have struggled, uh, you know, to turn the service lane into a sales channel uh, more recently because of inventory shortage, right? So we all know that it's tough to get someone to trade in their car when you don't have a car to sell them. Um, but dealers do have thousands, some tens of thousands of leads in their CRM that were unsold um, that they can reactivate, right? I think that the, you know, one of the use cases I see is going back to unsold prospects, maybe doing a data append 
and um, maybe doing some marketing. Is any of your clients doing that, like doing some data mining after you enhance those old leads with updated credit data? Absolutely. And it's one of the most neglected areas I see in a car dealership. Uh, I see car dealers all the time begging for leads. Uh, they're always looking for leads. And the biggest problem they have when they get the leads is the quality of the leads. So what I tell people is, is you don't, a lot of times you don't need to look outside for leads, look inside. You have a service database of 40,000 names on average. You have a sales database of 40,000 names on average. Okay. And what is the nickname for this database in, in many dealers? The dead file. Why? Because who's in that database? Okay. It's usually people that have come into the store for whatever reason they chose to come into your store. They maybe wanted to buy a car from your store, but they couldn't or they didn't. And what information do you have on that customer? Usually you just have a name and an address, maybe a phone call if you're lucky, maybe an email if you're lucky, but no other information. And what happens to that lead? They say, oh, we put it in the dead file. Why? Because I don't have any information on them. Okay. Well, that goes into that customer database. Well, what if we could turn that customer database into a live credit database and create super leads where I take that database and I could now get live credit data on every one of those customers that you thought were unmarketable to because you didn't have enough information on them. Now you could segment that database into prime customers, subprime customers, equity customers. And now when you market to them through an email, a text, a mail piece, a phone call, whatever it is, you have a direct way and a direct conversation that you should be having to them so that it's more personalized instead of just throwing out the snail mail that's, you know, that generic mail that just says, come to my store because we're the best in the area. Now you could direct those messages, make those messages more personalized so that a customer feels like that message was directed exactly to them and their situation that they're currently in. We turn that data, uh, that database into a live credit database doing something similar. When most people are doing direct mail, what do you usually do every six months? You're doing a change of address. You're enhancing and updating that database because people's addresses change. Well, we're going to be doing the same thing, the same concept with live credit data. So now when you look at that database, now you've got 20, 30,000 leads that you will be able to contact with the right messages and get much, much better results than before where those leads were just sitting unused. I and love this is, yeah, yeah, and this is, that's one of the biggest areas that I see that's neglected by the dealer. Stop looking outwards for help. When you've got the leads and the customers that came to your store already, now you have the tools to enhance this data and create a super lead for your people. And trust me, when a BDC person gets that type of a lead, uh, that's somebody that came to your store, and now you have the live credit data on them, you could really make a nice, uh, educated conversation with that customer. Love, I love all of those use cases, uh, a better way to greet, a better way to leverage the traffic in your service drive, uh, a better way to look at data hygiene, not just on NCOA change of address, but uh, credit updates. Let's pivot for a second, Bob. You know, there's been a lot written about uh, credit fraud, um, synthetic fraud, as more and more dealers are moving their retailing process to an online uh, even though the majority of transactions are still happening in the dealership and the dealerships are using, say, driver's license scanners, we are seeing more and more dealers doing completely remote uh, purchase and delivery. What can you tell dealers on the current state of synthetic fraud and how can they protect themselves from, you know, uh, organized crime? 
multi-billion dollar industry that is trying to skirt uh, normal identification, validation processes uh, associated with extending credit. Well, Brian, you're, you're 100% right. Uh, fraud is not going away. Uh, it's only increasing. Uh, the criminals uh, are, are very intelligent. Uh, it, it's, they, once we figure out one way to stop them, they find five other ways to, uh, to uh, create some other type of fraud scam out there. And synthetic fraud right now, in my opinion, is, is the biggest thing that we need to concern ourselves with. And it's probably the one fraud area that most dealers don't really know about. They may have heard the term synthetic fraud, but they really don't know what synthetic fraud is. And as you said, this is not a situation where it's one person that steals somebody's driver's license and cut, cuts and pastes a new picture on there where they're going in there and grabbing one car and uh, getting away. This is a situation where these are organized crime groups. They are spending millions of dollars up front to create these synthetic identities. These synthetic identities are taking a year to two years to develop. And why is it taking that long for them to develop these synthetic identities? Because they are identities that have good credit. So these organizations are out there buying products, paying for those products, creating a great credit score. And then what they do, which is so scary with synthetic fraud is, they don't hit periodically, they hit what we call in bulk. So they may take one identity that they steal online. Over a two year period, that one identity may turn into 100 or 200 identities that they've created off of that one identity. And now all 200 of these identities have a great credit score. And guess what? Because it's online fraud, they hit it one time. So now 200 identities hit the same day and then within five minutes, they're gone. That is very, very hard to track. It's hard for our uh, government and our uh, enforcement uh, agencies to track and monitor these people. And 95% of the time, these are offshore organizations. They're not a guy that lives five miles from the dealership that just pasted a, a picture on a driver's license and walked home with a car. We wow, can this, this, this is a people. big problem. It's a major problem, especially with groups too. When you have multiple stores, uh, these you know they're preying on these guys where they, like I say, they've created these multiple identities, sometimes hundreds of identities, and they hit all at once. Could you imagine if you were a big group with 20, 40, 50 stores, and all of a sudden, each one hits at one of your stores? You're, you're out 50 cars in one day, all right? So it's a major, major problem that we have out there. And because of that, now what we're seeing is we're seeing this transformation with credit first at the beginning of the funnel. Now we're also looking at compliance at the beginning of the funnel. Uh, as we talked about earlier, everybody today has some type of driver's license scanner, but that's all it does. So now what we're looking to do is make it easier for the dealer, make it easier for the consumer as well. We're combining it with a driver's license scan. We're combining ID verification. We're combining compliance. We're combining saw pull so that when you do one swipe with that driver's license into that scanner, it's doing everything for you. So not only are you able to get that credit data up front, you're able to now get ID verification, facial recognition, scanning the driver's license front and back, all 50 states, uh, looking at red flag and other ID verification products all in one swipe. How does that help the dealer? It's just one process. How does it help the consumer? You're not bugging them to do more and more different things in the process. You get it done right at the beginning, and we could help eliminate a lot of these online purchases and uh, off-site deliveries that are happening because of 
the way we're doing so much business digitally now. Wow, Bob, that is really a sober warning for dealers uh, really to be really mindful of organized crime trying to take advantage of loopholes and new sales processes as we move into a digital age. You know, Bob, I've seen your company grow. I've seen more and more dealers and technology companies integrate your software platform into digital retailing, equity mining applications. As you look on the horizon, is there any upcoming area of opportunity that you see coming into automotive or emerging from automotive that will further extend this credit first mindset? Well, I I think right now what's happening is uh, the OEMs are buying into this process uh, from the biggest uh, manufacturer uh, down to the, the smaller manufacturers. They're understanding what's happening with digital retailing. They're understanding what's happening in the marketplaces with lenders uh, trying to get involved into this process as well. And they bought into this credit first model. They're buying also into, they know the problems with fraud as well online uh, and with these synthetic identities that are being created. So uh, we all know when an OEM buys into a certain product or process, it's only a matter of time where it starts to trickle down to the dealers, whether that process is forced on them or whether they uh, buy into that process uh, that's available to them willingly. And I urge all dealers to start to embrace this uh, today and learn uh, about all of the softwares that are available to them, first of all, Uh, look at what your OEM is doing out there as well and what they're building, and then creating these credit first models to enhance the process. We all like to say car dealers are all similar, but they're all different, which is true. Uh, As as much as they're similar in their processes, uh, a lot of dealers are also different in their processes. And we could build these processes to the individual store. So don't think that if you built something that you feel is a great process, all we're going to do is enhance it for you and then open your eyes to a lot of the softwares that are out there that you probably didn't know, CRMs, equity mining tools, digital retailing tools that have this built into them already. You just didn't know that that software had this capability and all you have to do is flick a switch. It's that easy. And that's why we spent the last nine years that I have integrating with over 220 of these softwares out there. We don't need you to buy anything new. We just need you to use the softwares that you have correctly. And then you'll even get more value out of that software that you're spending usually thousands of dollars a month for. Yeah, it's so it's so true, Bob. You're enhancing existing sales processes to be more effective. You're rejuvenating sales opportunities that may have been marked for dead. And you're giving the customer what they want, a seamless uh, experience with less of the disappointment at the end. And this is a wake-up call for software developers that aren't using a credit-first mindset to reach out to Bob and his team about API integrations Bob, um, what's the best website for technology companies and dealers to reach out to to learn more about 700 Credit? Just go to 700-700-credit.com. Well, and, that could- and you could find out everything about compliance, saw pull, our credit uh, products as well. Everything's right there on our website, and it's very easy to navigate. Well, that is fantastic. I, and I want to remind all our listeners today that Bob is one of the supporters of dealership education. He's a sponsor of the 2023 Digital Marketing Strategies Conference. This year, we're coming to Austin, Texas. After 10 years in the Napa Valley, we're moving it to a great city with uh, more affordable hotels, more affordable air travel, easy to get in and out of. And this year, May 21, 22, and 23 is DMSC. And we have a special add-on bonus because GA4 is more important than ever as the Universal Analytics is being shut down on July, just in a few months. 
And we've added a full day of GA4 training by leading industry experts joining me for a hands-on workshop all day on the fourth now new day for the DMSC event. If this is the first time you're hearing about the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference, you should go to digitalmarketingstrategies.org and get your team registered. We're going to be talking about first-party data management, customer data platforms, applications of AI in automotive retail, streamlined sales process like what Bob is doing with Credit First, mindset and marketing automation, just to name a few of the top conversations we'll be having at the conference. And if this is the first time you're listening to one of my interviews, you should know that I have dozens of interviews with industry leaders, disruptors, and folks that are just helping make a better customer experience at franchise dealers and independent dealers around the country. So you can go to brianpash.libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N, or just search for the Brian Pash Podcast on the Apple Podcast channel or the Google Play Store or on SoundCloud. It's that easy. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening. Bob, thank you so much for supporting dealer education and coming on today's show. Thank you, Brian, and uh, thank everybody that attended and have a safe and happy holiday weekend. All right. Thanks, Bob. And we're looking forward to seeing you and your team in Austin, Texas in May. So until then, I look forward to spending more time with you on a future podcast session. And as Bob said, have a great day. 